I want to address some plain language to Chris Grayling and the Ministry of Justice. When we take to the streets to march to the Palace Hotel later on, they'll be holding a consultation there on these proposed changes to legal aid. And they, they call their consultation Transforming Legal Aid. Transforming legal aid, Chris Gray. That's not what it is. It's cutting legal aid. That's the plain truth of it. It's only, I mean, transforming implies some kind of imagining a better system. But this is transforming the way an abattoir transforms a cow. And we are not going to stand by and watch legal aid slaughtered in this way. The, um, the purpose of this demonstration and the march is to celebrate legal aid, in my view. It's a system that we should all be proud of, and I can see many colleagues here from a whole range of areas of criminal practice, and I'm very proud to see them all here, and I'm proud to be working with them over a, a number of years. I'm proud because this is a system that people fought to set up. The legal aid Act of 1949 was a new beginning. It was in an era of austerity, just like our present era of austerity. But at that time, people had a vision. There were principles. It was the era when the National Health Service was set up. It was an era that tried to put an end to some of the terrible inequalities of the 1930s. And in those years of the 1930s, you couldn't get medical help if you were sick and poor because you couldn't afford to pay for it. And you couldn't get a lawyer unless you could afford to pay for a lawyer. And so 1949 was the, the beginning. People fought. It wasn't just handed down. People fought for it. Uh, and it was the beginning of a system of justice for all. And I know that the people here, and, and I'm not just talking about the lawyers, but also Jennifer's talked about our own case. I think defendants, lawyers, anybody come in contact with the Based competition. But there is no provision in this consultation that will guarantee the quality of service. And uh, as Jennifer was explaining, it's absolutely crucial in these cases that, that service that is provided by experienced professionals who are dedicated to giving their clients the best possible access to research in the background those extra inquiries, going the extra mile for their clients to uh, enable them to obtain justice. So there's going to be a reduction in the number of firms, there's going to be price-based competition, and there's going to be, on the basis of what everybody has uh, learned from this consultation, no guarantee of the quality of service that will be provided. And there was an interesting quote in the Law Society Gazette yesterday from Chris Grayling. And when he was asked about quality, he said, well, the people who have come in contact with the criminal justice service are not great connoisseurs of legal skills. So Chris Grayling, they're not great, great connoisseurs of legal skills. It's a remark that could have come from a Thank you. 
about justice for everybody. So we need to stand together as we are today to defend the system that we have. Um, no one is suggesting it's a perfect system. This is not utopian, nor is the NHS. But what would happen in the NHS if you cut the number of doctors and nurses by 75%? People's health would be utterly damaged. And if you cut the number of legal aid providers by the same amount, justice and equality will be severely damaged. Now, it's not just the lawyers who are saying that. The um, consumer body which is set up to reflect the views of people who use the service issued a statement yesterday and in that statement they said that there was no way that the system would retain public credibility if the very people who were prosecuting you in court were, were the people who were allocating a solicitor to you and it would completely diminish the confidence of the public in the system. So that's not lawyers talking, that's the consumer body which is meant to reflect and advise on the views uh, of people who use the system. But it's even stronger than that because the, the survey that has been produced and published in the papers today by the Bar Council sets out that 71% uh, of people surveyed said that they believe that this would lead to more miscarriages of justice. 67% of people said in the survey that the, what we pay for legal aid is worth paying for a fair society. So those are the words that I want to remind Chris Grayling about. Fairness and, and justice. Uh, and I, I know that many of the people here today have spent a long time working on miscarriage of justice cases. I just want to add a, a couple of personal notes. Um, the legal aid started in 1949, and uh, that, so did I. That's, that's the year of my birth. And um, I'm getting on a bit. And every year we go to the Metropolitan University and we talk to the law students there. Because we want people to come into the profession. And the, the title of what we say to our talk is Why You Should Be a Legal Aid Lawyer. And we say to them, quite honestly, well, you're not going to get, go home with a fat wage packet at the end. But if you have passion about justice, if you have fire in your belly and you're committed to work in this field for, for justice, then you will find it extremely rewarding. And, and Jennifer's mentioned one case. And we've all worked with clients, and I think we all know how inspiring it can be that clients will devote themselves, clients and their families will fight and fight to get justice and fairness for themselves and their, and their relatives. Uh, and that, that's one of the wonderful things about working in this area. We cannot let Chris Grayling and the Ministry of Justice butcher our service. So that's the message I want to send out. We're soon going to go on, on, on the road and express our views to Chris Grayling in the big